feel really old, but really proud as well. Um, yeah, so like my sister was saying, we're going to be talking a little bit about friendships today and specifically about why friendships are important. And hopefully if we have enough time, I'll get to talk a little bit about um, like two things that make really good friendships. Okay, so let's just start off with a word of prayer and then we'll get right into things. Father in heaven, I just ask that your spirit would help us to understand and give us clarity so that we can truly reflect your image. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so why are friendships important? Why, why does it even matter? Well, I think the first and most basic thing is that we have to understand that God created us to be social beings. And what a lot of people don't recognize is that um, connection with other people is not just something nice to have. It's not just like an icing on the cake, but it's actually survival based. So um, what they found is that when people are neglected or a connection with other humans is like not allowed for them, they actually die. So this is, this is like as necessary as it is for me to drink water, as it is for me to you know, sleep at night, like connection with other people is vital to well-being, our own well-being. And we can see that in like, um, when you talk to prisoners who've been in isolation. So as a punishment, um, prisons often put certain inmates into isolation as a, like, if they're too unruly or things like that. And prisoners often say that no one who comes out of isolation, especially if it was for a long time, ever comes out the same, and they're never the same again. Um, and that is, that is like a short burst of isolation, um, never mind isolation that lasts for a long period of time. So the other thing I thought I wanted to point out is that um, the Bible, it, it says to us very clearly about the importance of friendships, the importance of connection with other people, relationship with other people. So it says in Ecclesiastes 4, um, 9 to 12, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to skip a couple verses here. It says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. In verse 12, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. A friend who sticks, sticks closer than a brother. So the Bible talks about this importance of connection and like being able to lean on other people. And sometimes I think we, we kind of look at needing other people as weakness, right? We think of it as like, I don't need anybody. I'm fine. I'm strong. I'm independent. I can do everything on my own. But when we look at the life of Jesus in his most trying times, especially in the Garden of Gethsemane, he actually goes to his disciples and he takes his three closest companions and he says, I, like my soul is distraught. I need you to pray for me. I need you to do this for me. And what's interesting is that Jesus doesn't take all 12 of his disciples. He doesn't try to like play this game of like, okay, I don't want anybody to feel left out. So I'm just going to take all 12 of you. And like, no, he actually takes his closest people who are closest to his heart, um, people who he feels so super connected to. And he says like, I need to lean on you guys right now, whether they were leanable or not is a different story. But um, anyways, the, the fact is that we are made to be social and those friendships, those relationships we have with other people are so vital to our well-being. Even Jesus in his perfect, sinless state, he needed to lean on other people. So we are no different. And I was thinking about this today um, when I was kind of just reflecting on how interconnected we are. Um, we tend to, in Western culture, think of ourselves as very independent and individualistic, but we are so interconnected, so much more than we even realize. So um, a neat little thing that you may or may not know is that actually human beings, the way that we're created, our nervous systems actually sync up to each other. So when we're in connection with somebody else, when we're sitting, we're talking, we're connected with someone, our nervous systems actually start to sync up. 
which is kind of crazy. So people's uh, heart rates tend to start to match. Our breathing rates tend to match. Uh, body posture often matches. Um, blood pressure, those kinds of things. Um, and it's really crazy because we don't even notice it day to day. But it's really useful for me in my work um, as a therapist because I can tune into my own body and kind of like listen to what's going on. And sometimes when um, somebody comes in and I know that I'm like pretty calm and peaceful and whatnot, and I'll have somebody come in and all of a sudden I feel my heart start to race. And I think, hmm, is that me or is that them? And, you know, I don't assume that it's, it's, it's them, right? But I check in on them. Like, how are you feeling about coming in today? Most of the time they'll be like, I am so anxious about being here. Like, okay, what's going on in your heart, right? And so it's really cool because just the fact that God created us in such a way that even our nervous systems sync up, it's very powerful because it shows how um, connected we are without having a physical connection, right? Like where there's no rope that's tied from me to another person. But it's this like physiological connection that like even our nervous systems sync up. So that just shows us like how much we need each other, how much we need other people. I think the other thing is that um, connection and relationships, friendships with other people are really important because it is a way that we learn about ourselves. So when we're in relationship with other people, we find out more about who we are. How we treat other people says a lot about how we treat ourselves and um, how we see ourselves and our own relationship to ourselves. Or even like it shows us more about who we are as humans. So for example, um, my sister has been staying with me the last couple of weeks and she has... Um, this habit that's been ingrained in her since childhood to like freely partake and use any of my things. You know, she'll come and she'll like try on my clothes and she'll try on my creams or whatever it is. And she'll just go through my stuff. And honestly, I didn't know how much I hate sharing until like I would have to come to these situations where my sister takes stuff from me without asking. And I realized like how much it annoys me that that that's when it, it dawns on me like, oh, I really don't like sharing. Okay, maybe that's something there <laughs> to work on, right? So we learn more about ourselves in our relationships with other people. And that, there's, there's a reason why Proverbs says, this is Proverbs 27, 17. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So it's, it's like our relationships with each other, they're like a mirror to ourselves. They show us more clearly who we are, right? I could think, it's easy for me to think that I'm a generous person, right? And so giving when I don't have to give anything, right? It's easy for me to imagine that. But when I'm in relationship with another person and that kind of gets tested is when I recognize like, oh, maybe I'm not as generous as I thought. Maybe I'm a little bit more greedy than I imagined, right? So in the same way, um, in a much deeper way, um, relationships that we have with other people, they, t they show us so much about who we are and um, how we treat other people and things that come up for us. It just it's a huge field of opportunity for us to recognize uh, who I am more clearly. So, so that, that's a little bit of like why are friendships important. And I want to just kind of transition to talk about two things, two ingredients, I think, that make up good friendships. Um, so the two aspects of friendship, I think, that are so important is uh, vulnerability and presence. Okay, so I think that if we can really like hone in on that and develop that, our friendships, our relationships, whether they're intimate or platonic, they will improve dramatically, okay? So uh, I talked a little bit earlier about when Jesus, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said to his disciples, he turns to them, and this is Matthew 26, 38, he turns to them and, and he says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. So there are two things that Jesus does that are pretty vulnerable. First of all, he says what's going on for him internally. He says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. 
Like he even uses imagery to show like how deep this is. This vulnerability is saying like, I am so, so much in pain to the point where it feels like I'm going to die. That is a pretty vulnerable thing to say. He doesn't put up this front of like, everything's fine. I'm all good. I got this together. I'm God. We, we, we good. No, he has this vulnerability to say what's actually going on internally. And the second part that where he practices this vulnerability is he says, stay here and keep watch with me. And I think this part is one of the most crucial and important parts is he actually says verbally what he needs from his friends. He says, stay here and watch with me. He doesn't say, okay, like I'm feeling kind of down, but y'all go do and whatever you need to do, I'll be fine. No, he actually tells them, I need you to stay here with me. To, to say and ask for somebody to be there for you or to ask for your needs to be met is a very vulnerable thing. And so we see Jesus practicing this vulnerability on two different levels, these two layers of vulnerability. And I'm going to say that if we want to deepen our connections with other people, we cannot get around vulnerability. Like we have to have vulnerability. If we want like deep, genuine friendships, we cannot get there without vulnerability because connection is literally for me to feel connected with a person is for me to feel like this person sees me and this person knows me and accepts me. These, these three things, right? But if a person, if I am not vulnerable, like how does a person see me? Like we're not talking about physically seeing a person. Like I could go out on the street, you know, downtown Toronto and I could see a lot of people, but they don't see me. When we're talking about seeing someone, we're talking about like on a much deeper emotional level that they see your inner world, right? <laughs> it's like, there's a reason why um, when we talk about opening up to people, right? We, we're, nobody is physically opening anything. It's not like there's this box of secret treasures that you, know, you unveil to a person. No, th this is like talking in metaphoric language, a process that is happening symbolically, but emotionally. Right, so for us to open up, there's this, there's this aspect, there's this, there's this part of when I'm opening up, I'm letting you see me and I'm letting you see my internal world. So when we open up to people, we share with them what is going on inside of us. And that is super vulnerable for people because it's so much closer to home. It's not very vulnerable for me to tell you guys that I had blueberries this morning, not vulnerable at all but it would be far more vulnerable for me to tell you about things that I'm afraid of for the future, or it'd be far more vulnerable for me to tell you times when I got hurt. These are much more vulnerable things, but the connection from sharing something vulnerable is going to be far deeper than sharing um, something like that's not very vulnerable. They're just two different levels of it. So if you really, really want to have deep friendships with people, vulnerability, is not something that you can get out of. It's something that has to be involved and practiced. Um, and the second part is presence, the gift of presence. So I want you to like just picture a room, like a small room, almost like the size of, you know, like in a square shape, just four walls, and there's a room. When you, when you are in this room with another person, you give them presence. What, what, mean, what that means is that you're, you're telling them that I am here and listening to you. I am seeing you. And we're talking about seeing physically and seeing emotionally. Like I am here to see, to see you, to hear you, and to allow anything that comes up in the space to come up. So for example, if that means you're going to cry, I'm going to be here and I'm going to be present with you. If that means you want to tell me about your favorite movie, I'm going to be here and be present with you. If that means we're going to sit in silence, I'm going to be here and be present for you. And that's what it means to be present is that like all of you, all of your attention is coming into this, this square room and you're there. The moment that something takes away from our presence, for example, if I start looking at my phone, it's like the one of the walls comes down from this room 
And all of a sudden, everything on the outside can come rushing in. And no longer is this a place of presence, a place of building connection. It becomes a place where it's divided, right? You're no longer fully there with the person. Instead, you allow other things to take its place. So when I think about presence, I think that it is this huge gift that you give a person where you say, I am going to be here. A hundred percent of me is going to be here with you right now in this moment. And it's a huge gift because what you're saying to them is I'm not asking you to entertain me. No, I'm giving you this gift of my attention, whether it's interesting or not, whether it's like it's in line with my goals or not, I'm going to be here. But um, when we, when our presence is divided, the moment our presence is divided, it's no longer presence. So for example, if I am present with a person and then all of a sudden I start checking Instagram or like taking a call or doing whatever, I'm no longer present. It's literally like me giving a present, but it's not a full present. So it's, it would be like me giving my sister a gift card that I cut in half, like here, use the gift card. It's not going to work. So if we want to be like truly, truly like there for people, our, um, our vulnerability needs to be there and our presence needs to be there. And if you think about it very carefully, this is like a very mutual, almost like giving back and forth. You're giving your presence and they're giving back to you their presence and you're giving vulnerability and they're giving back to you their vulnerability. And as you do that, connection deepens, connection grows. Um, of course, it's going to be different and at different levels with different people. Not everybody you're going to have a deep, <laughs> super fulfilling connection with. And that's not what we're talking about here. But when we're talking about deep friendships, that is um, what it's going to take to get there. And without it, it's going to be much more superficial. Not that that's a bad thing. Um, superficial friendships or more surface level friendships are also part of our connection. It's part of our levels of connection. But if our lives are made up of only superficial connections, there's going to be a deep void that is just going to feel very unfulfilled with us. Um, and, and then we will experience much more loneliness when we don't have this need of deeper connection to be met. So in any case, those are some of the things that I wanted to share with you guys about um, why friendships are so important because we are, we are socially wired um, to the point where even our body and our physiology reflect that. And if you really want to deepen connection, work on deepening vulnerability and being present with other people. And that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much, uh, Nina, for a powerful uh, workshop, uh, your seminar that you presented to us, um, and really emphasizing how important it is for us to have people and how important people are for us in our lives. We are always grateful to have someone as powerful and as experienced as yourself come and, 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 and fellowship with us. So thank you so much for making the time and uh, to be here with us.